Howdy, y'all. We'll start today with a sublimely simple question. What country is this? A question that simple should have an equally simple answer, and in some ways, it does. That's Yemen. To be fair, when I was a kid, there were two different countries called Yemen rather than just one, but ever since 1990, most people have recognized one single Yemeni nation, and this is Sana'a, Yemen's largest city. This is an ancient city. It was already a thousand years old by the time Jesus was born, and for the past 3,000 years or so, it's remained a populous, major city of the region. In fact, in normal times, I'd be able to tell you that this is Yemen's capital. But today, well, it's complicated. You see, for the past several years, Yemen has been torn apart by a multi-sided civil war, with four or five groups each controlling certain parts of the country. More than 100,000 people have been killed in this war. Millions have had to flee their homes, and more than 80,000 children have starved to death in famines caused by the war. Despite that, this is very probably the first time that most of you watching this video have ever heard of this war, even if you had heard of the country of Yemen. The Yemeni people are, well, having a bad time at the moment. But for today, I'm going to focus on one very specific part of this crisis. So, what part of Yemen's crisis will we talk about today? Water. Something so basic and easily available to you, me, and probably everyone who will ever watch this video that we spend most of our lives forgetting to give thanks for the fact that we have cheap and easy access to as much clean water as we could possibly need or want. At the moment, the Yemeni people aren't so lucky. This is an old satellite image of the Al Moka water desalination plant. If the name Moka sounds familiar, I'll do a quick aside and say that, yes, the coffee drink Mocha is named after the local city in Yemen because Yemen was the original center of the coffee-making world and may have been the place where people first invented the drink coffee itself. Anyway, a desalination plant is like a factory that gets the salt out of seawater so that it can be drunk or used to irrigate crops. Doing that isn't quick, cheap, or easy. But since water is super high on the list of things people need in order to not die, these plants are still important. The thing is, civil wars are often the very worst of wars. And this is what happened to this life-giving facility in the aftermath of a battle. This is one single example of how the ongoing war has disrupted the water supply of the people just trying to live their lives in Yemen. For the past few years, people have had to line up at water trucks and spend their savings trying to buy barely enough water to let their families survive. Families will sometimes wait in line all day only to find the water supply has run out. And when that happens, they sometimes have to scavenge for water that's most certainly not safe to drink. There's been an outbreak of cholera in Yemen that has killed thousands. And now, wait for this, guys. The main way that cholera spreads is when people drink water with particles of infected human poop in it. Now, please understand something. This is not happening because the people of Yemen don't know any better. The thing is, when you are forced with the choice of risking cholera and having no water at all to drink, that is not a choice at all. Or at least, it's the choice of choosing between a chance of dying and 100% certainly dying. In the city of Sana that we were looking at earlier, it used to be that in order to dig a well, you had to drill down a little less than 100 feet to get to the underground water level, or about one-third of a football field. Today in Sana, 
things are a bit worse than that. Today, you must dig 14 football fields down to reach water. Yemen isn't the only country in the world with an ongoing water crisis, and as our world's population increases and demand for water for drinking and growing food goes up as well, it may be that what is happening in countries like Yemen could serve as a warning sign for the rest of the world. To that end, let's look at how much water you use every day, not directly, but instead Let's look at the water that was used to create the food that you eat. In the case of plant-based food, water was used to irrigate those plants before they were ready for you to eat. And in the case of animal-based food, the animal itself would drink water, plus all the food the animal ate required water as well. So, how much water in gallons do you think a salad represents? This might surprise you. But the answer is 21 gallons of water. That's how much went into making those little leaves that you were pushing around your plate. How about a single cup of coffee? The coffee beans didn't spring from thin air, after all. Well, for a cup of coffee, it's 34 gallons of water. Coffee plants are thirsty little suckers. How about a can of soda? That would be 46 gallons of water. Both sugar and high fructose corn syrup take a thirsty to a new level. Now, let's try something new. How about animal-based stuff? How many gallons of water do you think a single egg represents? That single, solitary egg took about 52 gallons of water to make it to the grocery store. Staying with the breakfast theme, what about two sausage patties? Those represent something like 135 gallons of water. Spoilers, the numbers are just going to get worse. What about a hamburger? Accounting for the meat, veggies, bun, and cheese, you're looking at about... 660 gallons. Finally, to close things out, how about this delicious, juicy 12-ounce steak? That would be 1,340 gallons of water. Guys, water is an interesting resource because it truly is renewable. When we use it, it doesn't just disappear, but it can return to us as part of the water cycle. The danger comes when humans use water faster than it can be cycled through the biosphere. And as Yemen shows us, when we hit that level, things can get very bad, very fast. For your assignment today, I'm going to have you go through and use a calculator I made to estimate the amount of water you use every day around your house. We're not going to worry about how much is represented by the food you eat. We're only going to look at how much literal, actual water you use around the house. So, this is my water calculator, and it represents quite a few hours of research on my part. What you're going to do is you're going to read the questions and following the instructions. You're basically going to have to type a number into each one of these dark, black, empty boxes here. So I'll just look at a few here. How long is your person going to take a shower for? You can either use the numbers from your own real life, or you can make up kind of a fictitious person and kind of imagine how they would go through their day. For me, I'll say my person takes a 20-minute shower. So I put the number and only the number in the box. And as soon as I click somewhere else on the page, it will update right over here. Now notice there's two columns. The first one is called old. The second one is called new. When I was a kid, we would definitely be using only the numbers from the old column. But thankfully, in the years since I've been a kid, lots of devices in the United States have been updated so that, well, they're a whole lot more efficient with water. And most likely what you have in your house would probably be more along the lines of, you know, the new column. So this is probably a more realistic number.
But if you got some old stuff, it could still be this. Second one says, or are you going to take a bath? You can choose whether your person takes a shower or a bath. It says one is yes, zero is no, so I'll put zero. How many times will you brush your teeth? Let's go with three times a day. And will you leave the water running while you know the whole time while you're brushing? I will say no. I will only turn it on when I need it. So this number is going to update right here. Okay, so there's a bunch more questions. That I don't think any of them are too confusing, but by the time you get to the end, it's going to give you a running total of about how much water that your person would be using directly, not even counting all the food you are eating in your house. Once you're done with that, you can scroll down and read those last little parts right down there. And you should be done and ready to turn the assignment in. If you have any questions, man, I hope you know how to reach me at this point. So um, I'll leave you guys by saying, please stay safe and stay healthy. Mm -hmm.